Okay, welcome back. We're gonna we're gonna take a few notes from the, some of the stuff we did yesterday. Which, uh, if you don't remember what we did yesterday, or maybe you were not present for it, uh, we started talking about home improvement and like little things. So we started talking about area and perimeter. We did a little bit of that on Wednesday, talking about area and perimeter. Well, to, yesterday was the day where we I did I had to do some research, where you had to go find you know uh, I assigned um, different things for different people that were in the room. So um, just a quick reminder of what we talked about um, area is the number of square little units in an object, the square tiles, so like the tiles on the floor. How you calculate that is, is you take, length? yep, length and width, you multiply it, right? Perimeter is the distance around. Okay, so distance around, you add the, all the numbers up, so you can see mine there, you add up 25, 24, 25, 24, and you get 98. Okay, on um, that particular room now, I think, what was the dimensions of the room we did yesterday? Were they different? 16 well, by 20. 16 by 20, okay. I thought, I thought that's what we had. And what we were doing yesterday was finding the cost, finding the cost if we were to put in carpet and hardwood and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna bring up the numbers we had yesterday. There was one number we never discussed and that was painting. That's what we're gonna do today. Yep, so we're gonna use the two paints. I have two different types of paints we're gonna talk about today. Okay, so. What? No, that one was in bar paint. Yes, we're gonna do that one first. That one's first, buddy, and then we're using your second one next. Yeah. All right, okay, all right. So now, carpet. Um, we talked about the carpet. Now, the we did some research, we went to either Lowe's, Menards, or Home Depot, and we um, and each person in the room at the time was assigned a certain type. So like, um, I don't know who had carpet at the time. Somebody, somebody had to go find carpet. carpet. Yeah, okay, it was 68 cents per square foot. Um, and, then, and then the idea is that what you do is Shh. What we do is we take the area, which is the 320, that was the 16 by 20 room that we had, um, and we multiply by the, per, the price per square foot. So in theory, it would cost us $217.60 to buy carpet. Not to install, not for carpet padding, not for you know uh, making sure that everything's correct and all that. That is just the price of carpet minimum. And you have to buy extra, because usually carpet comes in huge rolls. They don't just sell exactly what you need, you have to buy the entire roll. So this is like minimum cost. That's how you think of it. Um, I would say as a safe bet, always double your price. Double the price and that's what you're paying because you have to have an inst installation and all the other amenities that make the carpet work. Okay, so 217 minimum. Now, hardwood, uh, this was 400, or sorry, not 400, but um, $4.29 per square foot. Now, there was two different things going on. They told us the price per square foot. So I took my square footage of my room, the 320, and I multiplied it by the 426. So minimum, it would be three. It'd be $1,300. So $1,372.80. Now, the fine print on that on that hardwood is that it came in boxes. The boxes covered about 22 square feet per box. So if I divided my square footage by 22 square feet, that told me I needed like 23 boxes or something like that and they're 94 bucks a box. So it was gonna cost $1,400 and 15, or $1,415.25 if I bought that many boxes. Um, that's if I had to go the box route, not just buy per square footage. And again, hardwood, you have to buy more than what you need. So it's always nice to have an extra box in case you mess up. Um, you don't need to double your price, you just need to get an extra box if you're gonna buy it per box. Tile, same thing, it was 436 per tile. We had a really nice looking tile the other day. Um, you just took the cost times how much um, square footage is. Um, again, buy some extra in case you snap a tile or you need to cut some up, okay? Because uh, the walls won't be perfect. So um, there's, some, there's some tricks to laying tile down. Um, you should lay down the, the pattern first. So you should lay down the pattern first before you attempt to glue it down or uh, grout it to the floor. That way you can see if it lines up correctly, if it's if it's parallel to the walls, if it's gonna match, if it doesn't cause a lot of headache to cut in certain corners. That is a trick that a lot of people don't think about when they install tile for the first time. They just like, they get the first piece, they put it in the corner and they go from there and then they realize they just made themselves a lot of work at the very end. Um, so lay it down first, get what your pattern is, and then start to worry about how you're gonna cut it after that fact, okay? Um, painting is the thing we're talking about today. We didn't cover that yesterday. Uh, we talked about one of the one of the paints uh, covered 500 square feet per gallon. That's huge. That is a massive amount of coverage per, per gallon. And it was $33 per gallon. 
um, $33.45. That was the first can. We had a second option that we're gonna look at today and it had less coverage. And I think that's important we get to see two different types of paints. And then molding, that was the floor molding where you had to go around this little splash pad here. Um, that was, um, now this particular molding was $18.57 per eight feet of it. Uh, it's because they come in eight foot planks. Uh, so my room was a total of 72 feet around because I added up, if you look at my dimensions, I added the 20, 16, 20, and 16, and it was uh, 72 feet. And what I did is I divided by what each plank is worth. You know, it's like eight feet planks. That told me I had to buy nine planks minimum. Minimum, I had to buy eight, or sorry, nine. So I took my cost times nine, and it was about $167. I would always buy a couple extra. Now, if it says you need nine, I'd buy probably 11 just in case they need to make weird cuts. Because if you look at this room, right? Now this room isn't 16 by 20, but if you look at this room, it's pretty square. That seems pretty easy. But the problem is, look what around the door over there. I have a weird like corner area around my door. Um, that's something I have to think about. Um, some people run the, the molding around the door frame. That's extra. You have to go up and around. You didn't think about that. That wasn't added into the cost. So it's always nice to have some extra. Um, if you're going to do around the door frames, you better buy a lot extra. Because doors are, you know, seven feet tall, both directions. That's 14 feet up and down, plus the top. So think about it that way. It's already just three, almost three planks there. Yeah, almost exactly three planks there. It's a good way to think about it. And that wasn't included in the cost here, right? So think about those. Those are little things, depending on how many doorways you have, and if you're going to go around the door. Sometimes people don't do that. They buy different types of molding around the door frame. Or maybe the door comes with it. Who knows? Okay, um, but those are the little things we talked about yesterday. I believe the the Google question of the day yesterday was, I think it was based on what, hardwood or carpet? Carpet. carpet. So you had to find the area, right? The area of that room, you know, length times width. Find that find that total area and then take it times the cost per carpet. Yep. So it was it was pretty expensive. So, okay, questions on that? Let's do paint today. Paint is something that it it's a totally different animal on paint. It's, it's a lot of work uh, when you get going. Um, most of the time uh, when you're gonna paint a room is based on prep, getting the floors taped off, the windows taped off, the doors, getting you know that masking tape you know where you need it so that you don't make any mistakes. Uh, it's the setup is the hardest part. It's not the painting, the painting goes quick. It's the masking and taping that takes forever. If you have more than one person helping you, it's way faster, okay? Um, so. Um, and once you get going, uh, like if you painted one room, um, you get way better at it. Just getting that practice, knowing how to make lines that are really clean and um, precise around the room. Sometimes you don't need to tape off once you get going a lot. If you watch professional painters, they don't, they don't tape anything. <laughs> they just go because they know what they're doing. So, uh, but yeah, so uh, we're going to talk about that today. I'm going to use this number. I'm going to use this 500 square feet. And then this 3345 um, for my for my example. So, um, so somebody remember these numbers. Somebody remember the 500, and somebody remember the 3345. Because we're going to do this today. We're going to do two different versions of this painting. I'm going to do it for this room, the 20 by 16. Okay. Okay, we're good. Okay, let's jump right into it. Um, let's jump. Um, we're going to do the numbers here. So, all right, I'm going to make a I'm going to make a room. Let's say it's 20 by 16. Okay, so. Uh, this room is 20 feet by 16 feet. Okay, and it's a square room. And um, what was the coverage of that paint? What did it cover? It was what, 500 square feet? Is that what it was? Okay, so 500 square feet coverage. And what was the cost? 33.45, is that right? Yeah, 33.45, and that's per gallon. Okay. All right, so um, these are the numbers I need to think about. Now, the thing I did not give you yesterday, and that's why we didn't do this problem yesterday. Yeah, I didn't give you the height of the walls, right? The numbers I'm giving you here are just the, the lengths, like the length and width of the room. That wasn't including the height of the walls. So what I'm going to do here, imagine that I'm going to make cuts down the corners of the room in the corners and let the walls fall outwards. So they, they, they collapse to the ground. So I'm gonna draw these, this is gonna be a really bad drawing, but I'm collapsing the wall, so it's falling this way. This wall is falling out this way. This wall is falling out over here. And this wall is falling out over here. Does that make sense how the walls fell? They like fell outwards. Okay, I know that seems kind of goofy, but 
these are the things I have to think about painting. Now, um, let's use a generic height of a room. Usually rooms are about nine feet tall, eight feet tall, um, somewhere in that range. I think schools have to be about nine feet. Um, usually homes um, that you live in are usually seven to eight feet, unless you have like vaulted ceilings and they go up really high. Um, let's use a generic, let's say use like eight feet. I'll just do that, something generic. So all the walls are eight feet tall for this room, so it's square. So eight feet, eight feet, eight feet, and eight feet. Okay, questions with any of that? Now we're not painting the ground, so um, I'm gonna take away the area in the middle. So we're taking away this area right here. This is where the carpet or hardwood or whatever we're gonna do. So um, so that's, that's out of the picture. We're throwing that out, that was carpeted um, or hardwood. We're just painting the walls. I'm not worrying about doorways. I'm not worrying about windows. I'm not doing any of that. Um, that's something we'll do later. We haven't even done the, you know, the hardware stuff yet. That's the next section we're gonna do. Um, but we have to paint. So we, what we have to find here, and this is the part that I said was kind of challenging, we have to find the area of every wall, right? So, and again, these are not the correct dimensions for this room, right? This room is way bigger than the example I'm using here. So, um, so let's, let's work about the top here. What's the dimension of this wall up here at the top of my picture? How tall are the walls? Eight feet, but what's the length down here? 16, because that number transfers up, right? So, so this this was 16. So the area of that wall, you take this eight times 16. So eight times 16, what is that? 128. So this this wall is 128 square feet. Now I don't I don't know how you want to label that. If you want to put square feet like I did, or you want to write it as uh, with little feet with a little square symbol above it, it's the same thing. So now that's that's just one wall. So if my if my gallons cover 500, I'm good with one gallon so far, right? So that's 128. The bottom down here is the same dimension. This is 128. So it has the same. It's eight by 16. So that's square feet, however you want to say it. Feet squared or square feet. So uh, what is that? 256. So I'm still good on one gallon of paint so far. What about these other walls? What are these? Yeah, these are 160s. Um, the reason why it's 20 by 8, so that's 160, and same thing over here, this is 160, it's 20 by 8. So, um, yeah, so let's add up all these. So the numbers we have so far, we have 128, we have a 160, we have a 128, and a 160. And we're going to add these all up. And that would just paint the walls. So 128 plus 128 plus 160 plus 160. Yeah, 576. And that's square feet, right? That's not including the ceiling, because most people have a painted ceiling. It's usually white. You just leave it white. You don't paint the ceiling. Uh, if you're ever in a house, don't paint the ceiling a different color. <laughs> just to word to the wise, don't paint it a dark color. It just makes it gloomy. Uh, just leave it white. You can paint the walls and anything. Just leave the ceiling white. I don't know why. I've been in houses before where the families have painted the ceiling. It looks terrible every single time. Just don't do it. It makes the room way too dark and it just doesn't work. So leave them white or off white or something like that. So, all right. Um, so 576. How many gallons of paint am I going to need? So the gallon can cover 500. So how many am I going to need? Two. Two. I need to buy two automatically. Um, if that was any bigger, then you just got to figure out how many gallons you need to cover that. So you have you ha you need more paint, right? Now we may not need two. It's better to buy two, having the same color, have extra in case you need to do little touch-ups here and there. You need to put a second coat, um, and it really matters on the type of paint you buy on the coverage. You might have to go through multiple gallons to cover. Um, if you're on a really dark color wall and you're trying to paint it a really light color, you're going to need a lot of paint because it has to cover. Um, if, you, if your wall has never been painted before, maybe it's a brand new building, right? Like think about the house project that our kids are building. When they paint for the first time, they might have to put on two or three coats because the walls have never seen paint. 
So it's going to soak it up and it'll just disappear uh, until it soaks through and it, co and it covers. Um, you know, I, I'm, during the summers I paint, so like I, I do that. So I painted the entire elementary building at the, at the little school. That's what I did one summer. It took me all summer to do it. And one room that they did when they remodeled it, I had to use six coats of paint to get it to soak into the wall and cover. I couldn't get it to show up. It took forever. Um, I was in one room. I painted it in the, you know, in the morning for a couple hours, painted it, went to the next room, came back. It didn't cover, so I had to paint it again. It took me a week to get that room done, just going in there once a day, painting it the next time. Um, it took me an entire summer to paint that entire building. I painted every room and every hallway in that building. So I know how long it takes. So um, especially when you have really bad paint. And they were giving me the paint. I didn't have to buy the paint. They told me the paint I had to use. I would not have used it. So um, some people, like, when they see this price of paint, like this $33, they get scared. They're like, ooh, mm, because, you know, you have to buy multiple gallons, right? Like, God, this is already, you know. If I'm buying two gallons of that, what is 33, 45 times two? Uh, 66, 90, right? I'm buying two gallons, so I'm already spending 66 bucks on paint, and that's not any, anything else. Um, that's, you know, not the hardware, and not the doors, and all that stuff, and home improvement. But again, paint can make a huge difference. Um, when I buy paint, um, my philosophy is I want to have good coverage. I don't need 500 square feet, right? I need just solid coverage, something above 200. And, and then I always want to get something that um, on the paint can itself that um, it says like one coat coverage, right? Something single coat coverage, so I don't have to go over it again. That makes the paint really thick, so the, the coverage goes down, but I don't have to go over it again. Um, I buy, when I buy paint, I buy super expensive paint. I go to um, over in Mason City and I buy it from, um, what is it? It's emerald paint from, uh, what is that? Sherman Williams. Sherman Williams. Super nice paint, but it also costs $50 a gallon. So, uh, what? Uh, it covers 250, and I don't have to go over it again. One coverage, and it's done, done. But it's super thick, and it doesn't splatter. It doesn't like drip when you're painting. Like I can roll it right on a ceiling, and it won't drip. Um, but that's that's unheard of numbers of cash to buy. Like you don't buy fifty dollar paint. That isn't normal. But I don't want to do it again, <laughs> right? I want to paint once. I don't want to paint a room seven times to get coverage. Come free. Yeah, it's exactly right, and it and it saves me time. If I know that I can do it one time and that room looks really good, I'll call it a day. I'll spend the extra fifty bucks on the paint. Um, so, but again, that's not normal. Normal people don't buy fifty dollar paint. I just I think it's worth it. Get really nice paint. It looks nice. I can wash my walls and it, the dirt comes right off of it. I can just, you know, take a rag to it and all the dirt comes off. Like, those are the little things I think about because I have kids. So, uh, they just get things, they touch everything. So, all right, um, questions on paint. Okay, you have a Google question of the day today. Now, um, what you have to worry about is the coverage. So, if your paint only covers 200 square feet, right, because that could be a difference, right? If my paint only covered 200 square feet, I'll have to buy three cans to get to get over 576. So think about how many cans you need to buy and what the total cost is going to be. Okay? The question of the day will ask how many, you know, what's the total cost of paint? I want to know how many cans you're buying in gallons and what and what the price is going to be. That's what I want to know today. Okay? But that's it. So I want you to get some practice with that. Okay? But thank you for all those volunteers yesterday for all that stuff because you guys did some serious research. I actually really like the hardwood floor that um that Courtney found the, the other day like yeah. it was a really nice hardwood floor so I'm actually thinking about that for uh, for um, for the barn that I'm um, refurnishing so. all right let's stop it there